channel, Medicare Secrets, where we uncover the mysteries and the mayhem of Medicare. So what we are going to cover today are some changes that are upcoming for 2023 that seem to be moving in a good and positive direction for people who've been spending too much on their prescriptions in this country. So finally, something has actually moved forward to lower the out-of-pocket costs to 2000 cap in 2026, but there are other really good things leading up to that date that are starting as early as 2023. So today I'm going to go through and, and read a Kaiser Family Foundation article, which will really dive in and explain what is going to happen in 2023, 2024, and forward. And I'm feeling happy about it, if you can't tell. I've been in this business a long time helping people with Medicare, and I have been, what's a good word, downtrodden, maybe. I My heart has gone out to people, seniors who are on Medicare, who cannot afford their drugs, who have told me that they won't take a medication because they can't afford it at age 68, 70, 72. Why is this happening? We are the only country in the world that capitalizes on our health insurance. And this is just one of those portions of that. So I'm real excited about today's article. Please, please, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel. I try to update you all, especially here leading up to the 2023 open enrollment for the country, which will start October 15th and last through December 7th. Subscribe to my channel for latest updates. All right, so now let's unpack and uncover uh, what's going to change for 2023 moving forward. Here we go. In the Kaiser Family Foundation website, this is such a great resource uh, to keep up with health insurance, Medicare, um, anything regarding our health insurance in this country. So here we go. How will the prescription drug provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act affect Medicare beneficiaries? On August 16th, which by the way is my birthday, uh, 2022, President Biden signed into law the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, which includes a broad package of health tax and climate change provisions. The law includes several, several provisions to lower prescription drug costs for people with Medicare and reduce spending by the federal government. These provisions will take effect beginning in 2023. Below this little chart here, it's going to show what the potential impact of these provisions for Medicare beneficiaries national, nationally and by state. So 2023 requires drug companies to pay rebates if drug prices rise faster than inflation. I think that's huge. Obviously, we've had major inflation, and that's how this particular um, portion of the bill got into the Inflation Reduction Act. But anyway, I like that because at least the drugs that are currently at decent prices, they're not going to get much higher. But you know, it's going to be determined by the cost of living, the COLA. Um, this is also great for all of the diabetics that we have in the country. So it limits insulin co-pays to $35 a month in the Part D. Now there may be a deductible. They haven't released the plans yet for Part D for 2023. Those will be out October 1st on Medicare.gov or you can speak to an agent. Um, we can all help you. So, all right, here moving on. Reduces costs and improves coverage for adult vaccines in Medicare Part D, Medicaid, and CHIP. So that's also great. Do you know how many times I get the call that the shingle shot is going to cost someone $198 and for the first one and $198 for the second one because they haven't met their deductible on their prescription plan? Currently, the shingle shot vaccine is run through someone's Part D and Anyway, very expensive for people on fixed income. So this is great. Reduces costs and improves coverage for adult vaccines. Also, the flu shot wasn't covered by Medicare before. So this is good. Now moving on, 2024, eliminates 5% coinsurance for Part D catastrophic coverage. I like that. So we've all heard 
I would think by now, what, what used to be referred to as the donut hole. And then uh, a couple of years back, they changed it. They started to call it the coverage gap and they took the donut hole word away. But they ended up being very similar. And once someone's medications reached a certain level of cost, then the um, government completely stopped paying and the person was responsible for 5% of their prescription uh, catastrophic coverage. So <laughs> that got better. Um, expands eligibility for Part D low income subsidy, full benefits up to 150% FPL. So what this means is currently there's there are Medicare savings programs and there's four levels without getting to all the boring details. They're eliminating the, the levels. It's basically gonna go to, if, if someone's income sits at 150% above the federal poverty level, then they will get full benefits, which means their Part B premium will be paid for, and they will get the lower, really low price drug cost of, well, this year it's like $3.95 and seven for generics and name brands, or I think $7.95. But anyway, the um, so that's also really good because there were people that were caught just above the federal poverty level and now those people in that that uh, you know not low 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 income not below federal poverty but just right above it those people are getting crushed and couldn't even put food on their tables so feeling better about that one now moving on to 2025 adds two thousand dollars out of pocket cap in part d and other drug benefit changes so that's what we we talked about is that they're capping uh in 2025 the Part D out of pocket. So that will be nice. There are drugs out there that run in the thousands per month for some of my clients and they don't all qualify for financial assistance in different programs that, that exist. So this will cap. I mean, this is a major change in the way our Part D works currently. 2026, moving on. 10 Medicare Part D drugs. What this means is, is let me let me sort of break it down for you. It means that there are the, the most expensive drugs in the country are concentrated in a small number of drugs, and so the government feels that because there's a there's not that many that are so expensive that are just not affordable. They're gonna. <laughs> It's like a little funny bidding war. They're going to be able to negotiate 10, 10 of those high, very, 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 very expensive medications. They're going to be able to negotiate 10 of those in 2026 with the manufacturers of those prescriptions to lower their costs so that they're affordable. Then in 2027, that is going to go up to 15 Medicare Part D drugs. And then in 2028, that is going to go up to 15 Medicare Part B and Part D drugs. So what does that mean? In a doctor's office, people get infusions and injections, and that is billed to their Part B. Um, so there's going to be, and they're very expensive also, and Medicare has been paying for that. So this should be kind of interesting. I don't know where, it, it seems like, it's going to again push the government is pushing these pharmaceutical companies to lower prices that's that's what i'm gathering from especially this one with the part b because medic the government was eating a huge piece of that and paying out to pharmaceutical companies for these infusions and injections in a um, do uh, doctor setting or outpatient facility setting okay moving on 2029 20 medicare part b and part d drugs now i don't know if it's a combo of Part B and D, but it probably is, you know, a total. But so very, very, very good news. Really a, a great, great article um, with great charts. I'm going to show a link to that article in the description of this video. So make sure read it, keep it. It's a great reference tool of what the changes are for next year and years beyond. Uh, that's all for now. You all have a very wonderful wonderful weekend. It is Saturday and um, I hope you're doing something really, really fun and uh, 
living life to the fullest. Hope you have good weather where you are. And I will talk to you next time. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, please hit like, share it with your friends. Um, there's a lot of information that is that does not get told on regular news. And these types of videos hopefully give you an education. And tune in. I have more, always more. I'm always digging up more information for you. Um, I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.